All right, so up to this point, we've been working on a lot of the nuts and bolts of the app. Um, we haven't spent a lot of time design-wise, so that's what we're going to work on now. Uh, the big idea is to start to customize the design of the app. We have several ways to do this. We'll be looking at uh, a good starting point and then, of course, more in-depth customization. Um, let's take a look here first as a little preview. You should have your copy of your project and you want to uh, taco run browser. Let's just take a quick look at the app in the browser. I want to open it up in Google Chrome for a moment. So run it from the browser in the command prompt. The reason I want to open it up in Chrome is because we can then use its development tools as a way to customize it design-wise. If you, if, when it opens up in Chrome, and then you hit F12, you're, you're familiar with that for the, for the developer's console and <coughs> side panel. And mostly we've been working with the console output here to help us debug console output and all of that. But what's also useful for, for us design-wise is if we are over on the Elements tab, and we've explored this a little bit on previous days throughout the whole three months. But now this is also more important because this will allow us to reverse engineer what we have to work with in order to change it to what we want. jQuery Mobile and a variety of other frameworks are a starting point for us to create an, an interface. One that I'm starting to look at that I'm, uh, I want to do more research on if you want to look at this at some point later, it is called Onsen. Onsen.io is the website. It's, it's a variation of jQuery Mobile in that it's you use this to create, to quickly create an interface. And there's many other ones as well. Sencha is another one. But I've been looking at this one. It seems interesting. I want to learn more about it myself. And it's very similar in that we've got in jQuery Mobile, data role equals page, and we get a page. With Onsen, you use its own certain keywords to create a page, to create animation, all of that. It's just another variation on making an interface. That's just the tip of the iceberg you might want to look at later. For us, what I'm getting at is we've got jQuery Mobile, and we've got this built-in design that looks nice and all of that, but it's not customized yet. We are able to fully customize our design because it's just CSS and HTML and JavaScript. But design-wise, we always have the ability to change what we start off with, with whether it be jQuery Mobile, whether it be Onsen, where, whether it be Sencha, etc., if we know what we're doing. And so the Google Chrome Developers Console helps us do that. You may have done this with classic web design, like Firebug, let's say on Firefox, but all of the modern web browsers have an, a way to inspect the elements and then make changes. So as an example here, then looking at the project, and I want to make a change to the size of that font, we can use Chrome's developer tools to figure it out. We can um, go up to you have to be, first of all, in the Elements view, and then select an element in the page to inspect. If you click that little icon there, you get an arrow. And then as you hover to different pieces of the design, they highlight visually. And they also highlight, perhaps, in the code over here. So if I hovered over the, the About button, you see how it, it selects or it previews various elements of it, and it shows you, here's your HTML code. And then to see the CSS code that governs it, you have to then click it, and then the CSS panel will change. Depending how you've got your layout here, you may see more or less. I've got it on, on the right side view, and I've also stretched it out, because you might, you might have it like that, where you've got your elements at the top and then CSS at the bottom. Or it might be useful to have it stretched out further, where you, where you see them side by side. But using that 
select element icon, I can click on, for example, welcome. And it shows that in my HTML, this is the particular code where we know that we wrote it ourselves. What we did not write ourselves are all of these CSS rules, all of these CSS selectors to make changes to the element because h2 and h2 is an h2 is an h2 but when you start to style it with css that's when the design gets customized so what i'm seeing then on the styles panel h2 has these basic built-in user agent style sheet rules these are the most basic aspect of things all this font is bold it's 1.5 m's then further down here, it says inherited from section home, UI page, etc. from jQuery mobile. So in the jQuery mobile file, there's a definition in there that is .ui-overlay-a, comma, ui-page-theme-a, comma, ui-page-theme-a, etc. These are the things that are, that much, much more directly govern the look and, and, and feel and style of things. I, I stretched out my CSS panel even further. So there's a class UI-something, that's jQuery mobile, comma, UI-page, etc., etc., panel wrapper, page theme A, uh, page theme A, or page theme A again, panel wrapper, and then overlay A. So, um, here I see something that says color, 333, three, three, and if I click the little uh, box, I can click a different color, and that, that change there. So there's some rule, some CSS, that is controlling the default look that we can figure out what is that CSS rule for us to change. This is the long way to do it, this is the hard way. It's, it's useful, which we will do. But of course, I'll show an easier way in a moment. But I want to break down the concept. The jQuery mobile CSS file is thousands of lines of definitions. And in there somewhere, this says it's line three, but don't believe it. It's just that it's been minified. And the whole thousand lines are one long, huge line, because we're using the minified version. But somewhere in the code, there is a, a rule specifically UI page theme A that is saying color of text is whatever, which I just changed. Text shadow is this, one pixel of white. And that is affecting the particular element right there. If I were to select, let's say, the text down here, again with my select icon, and I click the text there, other CSS rules appear here. Um, if I go over to... I don't have the example here, but some of you have the example. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, like this. If I had a title at the top that was very long, at a certain point it would get cut off. That's because the, the default CSS rule for jQuery Mobile, somewhere here, it says um, margin, I think it's that one, margin 30%. It's saying there's going to be like an empty amount of space, about 30%. I'll show you where this is exactly, but I'll just do it very quickly. And there is a spot for me to change the CSS so that that is no longer cut off. You know, I'll show you where that is in just a moment, but the default is there's like 30%, I would say 30% of dead space up there. And that can of course be editable. If you're curious um, and you click your selector icon, you hover it over the, the heading, you click on it, and you should see some rule that says class UI header, space UI title, comma, UI footer, UI title, right there. There are definitions that say the font size up on the header is going to be 1M, its minimum height is 1.1, the, the text is aligned to the center margin. We've got two values, which is a top and a bottom, and a left and a right. So it's 30% of empty space. 
further there's more pa more padding at the top and bottom 0.7 m's text overflow ellipsis so if any text goes past the 30 percent replace it with dot 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 ellipses uh, can we make that say something else no no corner plot but um that is then saying overflow hidden. Okay, there's there's another item there that's saying that if something goes past our margin, hide it. Well, if we turn that off, if we're saying don't adhere to this particular property, notice it no longer gets cut off. That's another way to possibly work with it, although it looks like a little off-center, doesn't it? White space, no wrap, outline, important. Okay, well, this margin of 0, 0.30, if we put it like at 0, 0.15, and you don't have to do this just yet, but if we were to put that at 0, 0.15, it stays centered, the text is no longer cut off, it fits up there. We're, we're changing the default that came with jQuery Mobile. So we always have that ability if we know what we're doing to make changes. This is just temporary. This is a sandbox. This did not change the original code. If I were to refresh, well, you shouldn't refresh because then Cordova gets weird. But if I were to refresh this, those changes that I made did not get saved. Because the sandbox in Chrome or Firefox or all the browsers, this is temporary unless you actually edit in the actual project, the jQuery Mobile JS. Or better yet, the codica.external.css, our file for custom code. And I would say never edit the original jQuery JS or jQuery CSS. Um, you should not touch those. You should leave those alone. They've been defined and set up and, and they work. When we want to customize our code, when we want to override the jQuery mobile defaults, that's what our external CSS file is for. That's what our external JS file is for. So if I wanted to make this a permanent change, in my JS file, I would have to write, I would have to write these rules. So as for a little practice, let's do it. And then again, we'll get deeper into this because this is a big, big topic of how to customize this. Um, there's no easy way to teach how to do this because it's going to depend on the project. I was very easily able to hone in and say, click this element and look at this rule, and that's how you make a change. When you're doing this on your own, you're going to have to do detective work in, by using the, the selector, hovering your mouse over various elements, clicking on an element, and then looking at the CSS. And if it makes sense, and oftentimes it won't because there's so many interlocking pieces, but if it makes sense, okay, I figured out, I need to write a CSS rule in my codica.css file, dot UI, overlay A, comma, etc., and then write the rule that will override it. The further complication is if you notice here, some of them are dark black and some of them are light gray. That technically means that this, in this particular case, only this is what matters. Only the part that was dark, and it changes if I select it, but only this part matters. In the selection I made, this particular rule is affecting it. Sometimes you will see many of these that are dark because it means all of them are affecting it. So for us, here's what I would have you do. If you saw, like I showed, that if you click if you have a screen with a long name, and we might not all have one up here, but if you then click on the on that heading, this is telling you you've got a heading. This is telling you you've got a heading with a class. If you actually click on it, your style screen here should say inline style empty. We didn't write any inline style then a style that comes from jQuery mobile, UI header, UI title. Both of these are black. We need both of those in order to affect that element. Comma, meaning this is also affecting the footer, the header's title and the footer's title. 
other things might must be also in play because I clearly have longer text here which didn't get truncated. And I have less text than the header, but it did get truncated. So other stuff is in place. Um, so what we need to do then, we need to edit our codica.css file. Let's open codica.css in uh, Notepad. Well, let's say at the end of the document, if we, if we go to the end of the CSS before the landscape and portrait styles, so about line 63. The Chrome inspector has helped us figure out that we need to have dot UI dash header space dot ui dash title curly braces because that's what chrome is telling us ui header ui title space comma curly braces this will override what is in the default jquery mobile dot css file what we need specifically is margin colon space zero and something like maybe fifteen percent with the testing that I was doing in the browser. Maybe I would have put 20, that's not enough space. Maybe I would have put 10, that's too much space. So with the Google Chrome Inspector, I have a sandbox for me to change those values and see their updates in real time. Then when I figured that out, I need to set them in stone by actually writing them in my CSS file. So if I wanted to, I can make other changes here, like the padding or the size of the font. Just for fun, let's see what it looks like. I will also do font size. Let's see, it's going to be too big. But just to see it, I'll put 2M. I never made a change to 2M over here in my testing. You could if you want to. But here, this should be that I'm affecting the right thing. The only one we really need is margin, but I want to see what font looks like. And of course, make sure that this is a space. Make sure there's a space between. If we've got it connected, that's a different kind of definition. We want a space. Yes? So, when we use that feature of Chrome, can we highlight it in the HTML file? Yeah, um, exactly. Because here, if I highlight, let's say, basic class, it's also highlighting right here in the, in the right. HTML. So, how do you know which part that highlights it in the status? Everything here is what it is. This is the one line of HTML, but all of this is the CSS so from top to bottom. Right? From top to bottom. Yeah, good point. I was going to forget to mention that. It's from top to bottom. All of this is the CSS that affects it from top to bottom. And we might see a lot of crossed out elements because, again, other CSS is in play. But it's from top to bottom. The top is the most specific inline CSS. Then after that comes this particular line in jQuery Mobile, which some of it then is superseded by other things, which then comes from this line of jQuery Mobile and deeper and deeper, all the way to the very bottom, which is the most generic. If we go all the way down, we're going to see body, the most generic CSS rule, which says, well, this doesn't take into a, this doesn't take into an effect, any effect anymore because another rule took over up there. And that one doesn't work anymore because another rule took over up there. So we read it from top to bottom, but all of that is the CSS. So to see our, our actual changes, um, I've made a change here in the CSS file, which I will save, and again, make sure there's a space between header class and title class. Save that. I'm going to run it in the browser to get the latest run it in the browser to get the latest updates. Refreshing it won't work because we're running it as a real project. We should see then that our changes were made. What should be most obvious perhaps is that the header text changes, size, and those headings shouldn't cut off anymore.
All right, so here it's uh, <clears throat> it's very obvious. There it is without making the change to heading one's font size, and here it is with making a change. It's a 2M size. It's big and bold and garish. And then over here, well, now I have a different issue because I put 15% of the font is larger, but we get the idea here. We wrote, we, we overrode the default jQuery mobile CSS with some of our own. We had to use an element inspector to figure out what do we need to change. I might have thought, well, what if I just put h1? Or what if I try to put header header h1? You know, that might make sense, because that's technically what we have up there. We have an h1 inside of a header. But that doesn't work, because we've got all of this jQuery mobile classes and IDs that take over. And that reiterates that CSS is the second level of difficulty in these concepts because of so many overlapping rules. And when we start with an with a framework like jQuery Mobile, the pro of it is that it's completed, ready to go, and such. The con is that we we'll, we need to reverse engineer the code a little bit to change it to how we want, and um, sometimes it takes a lot of effort. I don't, I don't need the font size that large. 2M was way too large. Um, I think maybe a 1.1, or, or just nothing. If you leave it as 1 as it is, that's fine. Or just if you want to change it a bit, 1.1. If, for example, other things I want to make a change are, there's too much space right here. I want to tighten up that space a little bit. Never mind the design. I want to, that's a little too much space. It's, I think it's wasted. That's also something that we can change. We need to figure it out. So the way I would figure it out is get the element inspector, and then before clicking, I would hover my mouse over various elements. Because you might not know exactly what the element is on first click. If I hover kind of over in this area, you see I, I get that empty space. If I hover over this, I get some other empty space. The colors and all of that, well, some of it has to do with padding and some of it has to do with margin. See, there's empty space there. So if I were to select this, the CSS that would appear most likely would define some of that extra height. If I were to click up here, some of it is also there. So there might be two rules that I would need to change. Let's say I'm going to try with the most specific or deepest level. If I click on the welcome, user agent style sheet, usually this one won't be of much use. Um, usually it's going to be something more like the next level up here, which is actually from jQuery Mobile. And I'm seeing border, color, text, shadow. I'm not seeing anything regarding a height and such. Um, I do see WebKit margin before and after. Although anything that has a prefix like this, a vendor prefix, really only targets one platform, not all platforms at the same time. So margin before, margin after. I could see, well, what happens if I change that? Usually when I'm trying to to Sherlock Holmes this, I try to make a change that is big, and again, anyway, this is not letting me change it, so it doesn't matter. What I mean is, if I see text shadow 1, and I want to figure out, what does that do? I try to make a big change, like change it to 10, instead of a, instead of a 2 or so, because then it's a little bit more obvious, oftentimes. This might not be the right spot, so I have to go back another level. This is a little specific. Let's get a little more general. I don't see here also anything about sizes and such. Well, if I go lower, color, text, shadow, keep going even further, font family, keep going even further, I see line height, 1.3. There's no units there, but it's probably M. make changes. Well, 
it might not quite be the heading two. I'm kind of looking around. I'm making a few changes. Maybe that's not it. But further looking down here, this is another way to read the DOM, the document object model, the, the tree, the node tree that this is on the right side from top to bottom. But then down here, from right to left, specific to general. Here, from the top to the bottom, specific to general. So it may be that I have to go up one level right here, which is the same as if I was highlighting it like that a moment ago. Article UI content. If I click there and kind of browse around, article UI content, and I browse around, I see a padding. One M. Just to play with it, if I were to change one M to two M, look at that. Look at how it got further scrunched up. This got bigger. The green area got. Padding got bigger, giving me more space. Again, to be obvious, 5M, look at that. So that was set to originally to 1M, so it would make sense that if I put that like at 0.25M, the space isn't so, so big. The problem, of course, is I'm losing that space, um, a good amount of breathing room on the left and the right, which makes sense because padding with one value applies it to all four sides. What if I were to do 1m space, well, um, 0.25m space 1m space 0.25m space 1m. That would have the, the empty space, remember we have top, right, bottom, left top, right, bottom, left. So we still have, we would have the 1M of space on the left and the right, so it's not so tight against the edges, and then shore up the top and the bottom a bit. Again, anything that I change here, this is all theoretical. If I want this to apply, I would go to my CSS file, codita.css, and create a dot UI dash content and write my new padding rule. I have UI header. Dot UI dash content. Adding uh, 0.25m for the top, 1m for the right, 0.25m for the bottom, and 1m for the left. So there still most likely is some space remaining if I still think that's too much and I don't exactly see any sort of rule, well that's perhaps guiding me that I, st that I would need to customize, create a new rule that is to further customize it. This is where it might help to work with this element 
style the inline element to help us figure that out. So we had, um, let's say, padding top. Let me just figure this out. Padding top 2m, 0.25m. Didn't really make a change. Maybe it's not padding, maybe it's margin. might be it. So I've got a tighter space up there. Well, what am I doing here? I'm trying to figure out. I might need to be very specific and add a rule to this particular element. I would not really do it in line. That's guiding me toward, there's an H2 here where I might need to add a margin up top to shore that space up a little bit. So that guides me, or that leads me toward in my CSS here, um, we've got UI content. I may do dot UI dash content space H2. I can say margin top 0 0.20, I think it was way too small, 0 0.5m. So as I, as I test this and run it in the browser, I may figure out, maybe I don't need UI content anymore. Maybe I just needed UI content H2. And so this is the difficulty then with working with any framework that it starts off, it gives us a starting point, which might work really well. I mean, we need to customize it, so oftentimes we need to get into some custom CSS. But we need to reverse engineer. We have to do some sleuthing to figure out what is the built-in CSS here um, to make a change. I'm going to run this latest version of my code, see how it's working. So I put my heading one back to a, a little bit more of a conservative size, 1.1, looks good. Um, I tighten up that space above welcome, which would then automatically adds it to all my screens. If you don't see the difference, here it is before. Ignore the red, but here it is before, and then here it is after. It's not so much empty space there. Also, there's my heading, my STCE, look at that size compared to a 1.1 slightly larger, a little more readable. So I could go in and, and further figure out any of these aspects that that don't quite work for, for defaults. And what I'm saying here, this is the hard way. I'll show an easier way in just a moment, but you see this concept is uh, using the element inspector uh, to reverse engineer what's there to figure out what I need to change. And even the element inspector could be pretty complicated because then we've got styles, computed, event listeners, breakpoints, properties, so many um, ways to look at our code here, our CSS and our styles. And um, figuring out, did I select the right element? Am I targeting the right item so I can change its CSS? You see there now, 
that if I have it highlighted, now I've got a 0 0.5 above, and I guess the 1.0 below, the, the uh, orange color representing margin, and over here, the green color representing uh, padding, the blue color is the actual content, something like that has very little of a size for content but a lot of um, a lot of uh, padding that gives us the space between the the icon and, and the button itself I could of course go in and figure this one out this is much more complicated because we've got all of these that are affecting so we're saying header and title and I forget what the squiggly line means again but it's something about a descendant and then button and then block and etc and then that's a one pixel border. I wanted two pixels between to make it obvious five pixels between the elements. I'm starting to change that. So that's something we're going to explore a little bit more using the element inspector to overwrite our code, but I'm going to switch gears a little bit to using the, the, the easier tool. Any questions before we do that, though? Anything about this element inspector? Okay, so the easier route is that jQueryMobile.com gives us a tool to much easier change our design because I could use what I've been talking about right now to figure out what's the background color there and how can I change it. jQueryMobile.com gives us a way to edit the theme a lot easier. So I'm going to open a, a new window and let's go to jQueryMobile.com. And we haven't looked at this in a little while, perhaps, but here is the documentation of jQuery Mobile. And there's also a section here, themes. Click on themes. Themes at the top here. This opens up the theme roller. Welcome to theme roller. Create up to 26 theme swatches, lettered from A to Z, each with a unique color scheme, then mix and match for unlimited possibilities. Okay, so if you could get rolling. Remember deep down in the HTML code, we have uh, data role equals page, data role equals button, whatever. And there's also a data theme equals A or B. And A is the default, the gray. If we were to change any one of our designs, data theme equals B, it would go to the dark theme. So we have the ability to have 26 different designs in our project, and we simply call them anywhere we want with data theme equals J. Well, in order for that to work, we need to have J defined. And the theme roller here, what this is about is to you know, define our different letters, swatches. And so there's the default A and then B and C. And this is a very cool drag and drop way to make changes. So if I want to make a change to the top header, I don't, I don't want a gray anymore. I want a red. If you drag the red onto what you're trying to change, it's going to change it. Behind the scenes, of course, will be some code, and we'll see the code in a moment. But here is a very visual way for them to start to make changes to this 
head in to this header, which also makes it here, because this is a header, technically. And what's happening is something is changing up here on the header and footer bar, which you can fine tune it here if you'd like, besides drag and drop. So if I want to change the background color of my whole app, let's see a nice green, you know, I drag it and drop it somewhere there. What's page? What's the background color with the border? Page. So I'm making like a cool uh, watermelon app or something. And I drag some colors, drop them in here, things will change. I'm just going to choose some bunch of random colors for the moment just to show you. Different things appear here. Oh, that's a button in, when it's in its normal state. Here it is. Here's a button when it's hovered, when it's pressed, when it's inactive, meaning the moment it's been clicked. So there's different things that I can change here. Sample text and links. That's a link. That's readable. I have the ability to make any changes here. This gets us, however, perhaps, out of our comfort zone, that if we're more comfortable with the code, you know, how is it the left brain, right, left, right, left brain, right brain thing? Um, you know, some people are more comfortable with the logic and, and, and the code and such, and others a little bit more with the art, the less logical. But if we're going to be our own app designer, we need to have some experience in both. So this is the part of the brain that is the artistic part where, you know, that might look nice, but it violates a lot of design theories, perhaps, because of bad color combinations bad user experience. So again, you might not be a pro at color design and such. It doesn't matter. It takes practice and, and knowledge and such. Uh, but here, I'm just kind of practicing with something, and I'm not kind of liking how it looks like. So you can just refresh. That'll reset it back to the beginning. What I want to do here is I want to give you a moment to kind of play with this, because we can very easily now add three color designs to our project. And again, if you're not a big color um, or a, a de designer and such, what we can do at the top here is if you see Adobe Cooler swatches, if you click that, that opens up to show you these pre-made swatches that have already been designed that look nice together. So it kind of gets cut off, but I see union number two and ICT logo. And the way that we would use this is, you know, we've got these color swatches, which you can drag and drop and use. You can also put them in the color well at the right. But in theory, these, these colors should look nice together. And I think that kind of looks nice there. Those color combinations, a little dark, a little light, nice color, where you drop some of those other colors elsewhere here. So I'm going to give you five minutes or so, at most, play with this. Make three different color designs. Make some tweaks over here as well if you want. Um, and so we're going to have three color designs, and when we're done with that, I'll show you what do we do with them, how do we apply them. But again, be careful if you do a refresh or back up and come back in, it's gone. Um, we will be able to export it and all of that, but we'll get to that in a moment. So maybe choose uh, a basic color scheme, A, and then a or a crazy one on B and a really crazy one on C, whatever. Just create some color combinations here, and then we'll see how to apply them to our project in a moment. One thing I will say here, which I think I might have mentioned we were when we were designing our icons and such, think in terms of contrast. For example, this piece of paper with text, this is an example of very good contrast because we have black text on a white background. We have a dark foreground on a light background. If we have 
for example, up on the student code of conduct on the wall, we have a dark background, the, the teal and white text. So again, in that case, it's light foreground, dark background. So it doesn't matter the color, but think in terms of light and dark, forward, uh, foreground, and background. So if I've got, like right here, this is a relatively dark orange and a relatively dark brown, it might not be as readable as it could be. It's even worse if I have, you know, this kind of orange on that kind of orange. It's a different orange, but you can't see it. It's a, it's the same sort of dark on dark or light on light. If I had clearly the opposite, like over here, that's not quite white, but it is a yellowish, beigeish sort of, then it's a light on a dark, very readable. Or the opposite, dark background, light foreground, light foreground, dark background. That's the best I can give you for the moment. Think in those terms of those contrasts. All right, so you can always come back to this to make further changes in a couple of ways. This is temporary if you reload, but if you notice on the top right corner you have share theme link. If you click share theme link, what will happen is it will generate a unique address that you can share with people. You can come back to this. Your original styles and swatches will be here. You can further make changes. Share button. However, we only we can only store this theme URL on the server for 30 days, then it will be deleted. Download a theme to keep a copy safe. So this is only temporary for 30 days from the moment that you created it. But if you're interested, you can copy that address, and I'm going to save it in a text file just to have a copy of it. 
it's only going to last 30 days, so I won't be able to check it next month. But uh, this is one way to save it. The better way, of course, is to actually download it. So let's say I'm done with that, and we have download. Click on download. And this screen allows you to, to name your file as well as tells you how to use it. So let me explain. On the top right corner, theme name. This is going to be basically the, the name of the CSS file. This is going to give us, ultimately, a CSS file. So if I were to call this, you know, my style, or my new design, or new colors, or something, it would download, and it would give us a file called newcolors.css. So any name you want to type here will be fine. No spaces. So I'll call it new colors. Um, this will generate a zip file that contains both compressed and uncompressed versions of the theme. So it'll give it a give us a .min.css file and a .css file to use your theme. Add it together with the icon CSS file to the head of your page before the jQuery mobile structure file like this. Now it doesn't quite explain itself. We've never used the jQuery mobile structure file. We've used the normal jQuery <coughs> .min.css. jQuery mobile um, structure is is a, is a further stripped down version, a further simplified version of jQuery mobile. A while ago when we first talked about jQuery mobile, we downloaded the whole zip file, we said give me the whole thing, give me every feature of jQuery mobile. We could have gone over to, when we went to download, we could have done a uh, custom download and said give me this piece give me this piece, uh, I don't need a control group, I don't need a range slider, so I could have said don't give me this, don't give me that. It would have, it would have been a different kind of file, um, different capabilities. We downloaded the one with all capabilities, even those we're not going to use, so it may further um, be more space in our app. But if we were using the structure file, it wouldn't really have much to work with. So this is saying, add your custom design CSS and the icons that we'll download before the structure file and the rest. So for us, we're not really going to do it this way. We're going to do it backwards. We've got jQuery mobile dot mid dot CSS. We've got the full version. We're going to have that one first. Then we're going to have our custom CSS. We will need this icon one because we're using the full jQuery mobile. And it says the rest of your stuff, jQuery, JS. So the way we want to do this is basically um, give it some sort of name at the top right. I'm going with new colors. Click download the zip. It's going to download somewhere, probably your desktop. So we have some file with some date, and inside of it is the actual items. But what we need, would need to do is copy a few items into your project folder. I've got my project folder. I've got the theme that I just downloaded. You can open the zip file. You can then open the themes. And then here we go new colors CSS and new colors min CSS and jQuery icons. The actual icons are in the images folder. The only thing we really need is the new colors.min.css, the minified version of our code, because we're not using the just the jQuery structure file. It already has the icons and the images. So I'm just going to drag over the minified CSS file into my project file. We'll connect it in the, in the code in a moment. But what is important to do is save a copy of that zip file. The 30 days, that link will work for 30 days. But with this, I can re upload my colors and make more changes anytime in the future, 30 days, 130 days. 
because we have from the theme roller import. We can re-import, copy and paste the contents of an uncompressed jQuery mobile theme to continue to edit it. Our zip file, if we only copied the newcolors.min.css, we're stuck. That's why we, we're keeping the whole zip file because that has the uncompressed version. I would copy the contents of it. I would paste it back into jQuery mobile theme roller, and then I can further make changes to my um, design. I'm going to save a copy of those colors somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be inside of your um, project folder, but I'll save it on my flash drive. So I copied the zip file to my flash drive. I copied over uh, newcolors.min.css. That's a matter of editing the index file to connect it with the CSS file. Back to Notepad. We need to open the index.html file. The index.html file we have, line 16. Um, there's the jQuery mobile full version. Then we've got our external Kudika, so our customized code. I'm going to replace line 17. Line 17 doesn't serve any purpose anymore. And this is where I'm going to add a reference to my, co my new colors. So we need the tag link, which does not have a pair. It needs an attribute of rel. The relationship is that it's a style sheet. We need an href. And whatever you call your file, you add its CSS here. Right, we called it uh, newcolors.min.css in my case. Newcolors.min.css. We still want Kodika third because then this will over this can in this order this can override anything that's in the basic jQuery file and anything in the new new design of colors. So it's his last in that order because then we if we want to make further changes to anything, it's still gonna supersede the other ones. You should then save it and run it um, in browser or as an actual device. I'm going to do taco run browser. I'm getting the new colors on the home screen. Different designs, pretty cool. New colors. If um, remember, I had designed A, B, and C. A is my default, so it looks like A. If I want the design of B, I would further have to edit my index file 
For example, start off with the home screen, number line 22, data roll page, ID home, and add there data theme equals B. Here I'm adding data theme B to my home section. You should recall then that I would need to add that to my other sections or any screen where I want to apply theme B upon. I'll just do it for theme A and then I'll run this in the browser to see the changes. Try that. You can add a data theme B to a section. Depending on the element, you can also add it to the element. Let's say nav to the nav data theme B. Depending on various factors, you can apply aspects of the of the color, the new color, to specific elements if they also meet the characteristics of what you had changed in the theme roller. So starting out with the very basic colors that we've had all along, here's my theme A for the home page, looks good, and here's theme B. So another design with different colors, and that one um, still looks blue because that's defaulting to theme A. I didn't add theme B to all my screens, sections. Just as a starting point here, theme A is on the home section, so it looks different. Basic theme A, theme B. And I have a further theme C that I could work with, all the way up to theme Z, up to theme Z. I have 26 themes that I could apply to that my styles, my colors file, and then activate the colors as necessary. Thinking one step ahead, looking um, in the concept of customizing it per platform, I can make certain colors and designs and styles for iPhone in certain colors and designs for Android. We have the ability to, to target each platform. So if that worked very nice, we're going to take our first break and I'm going to run this on my real device. I want to see it on a real device. Testing it in the browser is nice. I want to see it on a real device. 7.15, we'll take a break till 7.25. And then after that, we'll start to look at, let's change fonts. I'm tired of this boring font. We can have much more interesting, crazy fonts. We'll look at that very soon. So back at 725.